Hello guys, this is Jacko from Muddy Tiger Outdoors. Today we're going to do a video comparing two of the pistols that I own, two of the pistols that I really like a lot in terms of what they do, in, term, in terms of design and functionality and uh, accuracy and all that kind of stuff. So the first one is going to be my Glock 19. Uh, this is a Gen 4 Glock 19. As you can tell, there's nothing in the magazine, there's nothing in the chamber. Uh, it's a safe pistol to handle for demonstration purposes. And the only thing that I've done to this is just put a wrap by gun skins to make it a little bit more uh, custom looking. But it's uh, aside from that, it's a completely 100% stock pistol. The other one that we're going to be talking about or comparing is going to be the Smith & Wesson M&P 9 uh, full size. And again, it's a safe pistol. There's nothing in the magazine. There's nothing in the chamber. Uh, and the primary function for me for this one is basically the gun that I keep in my nightstand uh, at night. So, you know, just for safety purposes. And this is the way this one stays in my nightstand with a little uh, cheap little light to illuminate uh, in the dark. So. so the first one that I bought out of the two was the Glock 19. And it's been a very good pistol to me. I've uh, trained and I've... Uh, carried it for almost every day since I uh, since I purchased it so very very good gun and of course you know like anything before I bought this gun I did a lot of research I read about it I watched a lot of videos I uh, uh, saw and read and heard a lot of uh, opinions of people that own this so uh, definitely I did my research or my homework before acquiring it same thing with this one uh, it was a, a pistol that I've been or I was looking at for a while before I uh, bought it and uh, I definitely like a lot of the things about it and and uh, it's it's been so far a, a very very good pistol I've had no uh, issues whatsoever I've put about close to a thousand rounds on each uh, of the handguns and uh, I did have a malfunction with the Glock at the very very beginning but I think that's because of the ammo nothing to do with the pistol and I've had zero malfunctions with this, and they both uh, run the same, the same ammo. So, let's talk about similarities. As far as similarities, they're both uh, safe action pistols. Uh, the internals are pretty much the same. In fact, let me take the Glock apart, and I'll show you uh, the slides um, side by side so you can take a look. So, this is the Glock 19. The way it t uh, uh, comes out, or the way it comes apart, is you've got your recoil spring, you take it off, there's your barrel, there's your barrel, and there's the slide, and of course there's the striker fire, there's your little plunger, which is part of the safe action system, and uh, there's your striker right in there, or the tip of the striker if you can see it. And the Smith & Wesson is basically the same, um, except you got a little bit of an extra step. So you've got this lever right here on the side. What you got to do is you lock the slide back like that, manipulate the lever just like this and then right on the inside I don't know if the light's gonna catch it there's a little bit of a yellow um, I guess it's a lever it's called a lever I don't know if that's what it's called but it's there so what you do is you can use this little tool that the Smith & Wesson comes with basically you twist it and it comes out and that's what it looks like and you use that to just kinda catch on to the lever and pull it out and that um, that is just that you, you don't have to press on the trigger now you can do that or I have a, 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 a very thin pinky what I do is I just reach in with my fingernail and I pull it out now once you do that you pull the slide forward and it comes off again just like the Glock 19 there is your recoil spring and your barrel there it is. And of course, same as the other one, we have the base of the striker, the rear of the striker. There's a little plunger there for the safe action. And there is the tip of the striker. Um, if we compare recoil springs real quick, you know, they're both uh, very different in terms of where this is a double spring and this is a single spring. As far as recoil, 
I can't tell much of a difference on 9mm. They both use the same ammo. I usually shoot 115 grain and they are basically the same uh, recoil. I guess recoil has a lot to do with, of course, the size, the weight, the type of ammo, but also the grip. And I grip uh, both of the weapons about the same. Since we have the slides basically bare, that's the size of the slide. And you can tell the Smith & Wesson right here is a little bit longer, not a whole lot thicker. Uh, I don't have a way to measure right now, but you know you can definitely tell uh, the uh, uh, the width of both uh, slides. Very very good um, quality of both uh, as far as the finish goes. And here's the internals of the Glock 19. Very very similar as far as the Smith and Wesson go. They're they're pretty much. Um, uh, the same kind of internals. I think the Glock 19 has a lot less moving parts or, or pieces than the uh, M&P 9. Now as far as putting them together they both go together pretty much identically so we have the Glock 19 slide right here. I'm gonna grab our barrel. Oh! Let's compare barrels real quick. Here's the um, Smith & Wesson and here is the Glock 19 slightly uh, longer barrel. I think this is a 425 and this is a I think it's a four inch barrel. Don't quote me on that. Of course the rifling is a little bit different but they're both very very accurate pistols. Now as far as putting them together here's Glock 19 slide. Barrel goes in like this. Here's our recoil spring. We put it in. We lock it in place. There's a little uh, groove there that kind of holds it in the right position just like this okay then we put it back in and there you go it's back in uh, working order all right as far as putting the uh, MMP9 back same way once you got your uh, slide assembled you just run it back and the nice thing about this is that the lever will, will go back into original position on its own. Do you see that action? Now, remember that little lever that is in here? Well, when you put the magazine, it just kind of pushes the, the lever to disconnect the trigger, uh, or so you don't have to pull in the trigger when uh, pulling it apart. But you can also do that manual. If you lock the slide, just push it in there back where it goes, and there you go, back in working uh, condition. So those are some of the main similarities as far as uh, functionality, as far as the way they're both uh, designed. As far as size goes, um, you know, once again, I'm going to show you uh, roughly the length of the slides, the MNP9 and the Glock 19 on this side. Just a tiny bit, maybe half an inch, if that, uh, barely. Of course, you got a longer sight radius with the uh, MNP, which some people prefer that. For defensive purposes, I don't think it's going to matter a whole lot unless you're doing competition shooting. As far as height goes, there's that much difference between uh, height. Of course, you've got two extra rounds here with a 17-round capacity magazine with the M&P. And with Glock 19, you've got a 15-round mag, mag capacity. Um, so, you know, that's, that's both really, really good capacity if you live in a state that allows you to have the higher capacity magazines. Um, as far as ergonomics, and here is where some of the differences come into play. Uh, ergonomics, obviously, a lot of people say that the M&P is hands down better ergonomics. It feels more natural. It feels good in the hand, and my wife kind of likes the uh, MNP as far as ergonomics a little bit better, but she shoots the Glock 19 better than I do. Um, I don't have a problem with the ergonomics of the Glock 19. I think in my hand, if it feels very, very comfortable. I can get a full grip. Um, I don't quite get as high up in the uh, beaver tail as most people prefer, but you know, it's a very good grip. It's a it's a very um, comfortable grip for me, especially with this Gen 4. And the uh, finger grooves there, it's a, it's, it feels very, very comfortable in the hand. Of course, the um, M&P, same thing. A little bit better fit, maybe, but neither of them uh, bother me at all. So, pretty good uh, grip there. 
Um, so yeah, I like both. In fact, I can't say one is better than the other. They both feel very similar, but then again, slightly different. I don't know what it is, but I can shoot both very, very comfortably without a problem. Now, the triggers. Uh, once again, people say that the Glock trigger is a lot better because you can hear that um, fire pin or you can hear it drop. And, of course, the best part is the reset, which is very tactile and very audible. Again, very short finger pull. And there's your reset right there. As far as the MNP, I know they've done a lot of improvements uh, from when these came out. And I like the trigger too. I don't have a problem with the trigger. So here's your fire there and it stops. And your reset is not as audible. It's not as tactile as the uh, Glock. But it's still a very good reset. Now, one of the improvements from what I understand is that when you pull the trigger there, there's a little backstop right here in the back of the trigger and also a backstop at the uh, trigger guard so you don't over travel. So boom, it stops right there and of course it resets. Now these are both uh, safety triggers in terms of uh, the way you pull it. As you may know, um, this one won't go all the way. You have to kind of press it right here so that this joint moves back there and it releases the trigger. If you see this little protrusion right there, that triangular or that point, as I press here, it just lets the trigger travel back down so it's released. If you don't press there, then that stops the trigger. Very similar with the Glock 19. Again, you've got that little button right there. If you can call it a button, that's what releases the trigger. If you, if you press it in the wrong area, it won't go off. If you press it on either side, or maybe even up here it won't go off. You have to press it, you have to place your uh, trigger finger right where it needs to be for that trigger to go off. Uh, they're both, um, as far as similarities go, again, you, they're both uh, interchangeable from side to side, the magazine release, they right or left handed. Same here, I've got it on my right hand, but you can switch it very easily to the other side. Um, now, how do I train with these? Well, obviously I go to the range and I shoot them uh, whenever I have a chance, but I also purchased to train at home this uh, laser light uh, trainer, and I'll put a link of this. I bought it on Amazon, and it's basically, it goes inside of your uh, chamber, and it's got a little button here, so when the striker hits that, it shoots a laser, uh, into where you're aiming and it kind of gives you a very accurate um, area or, or, or visual representation of where the bullet would have uh, gone if it was a real bullet or, or, a, or a live round. So I train with that at home a lot just to kind of practice the uh, trigger, you know, pulling the trigger, grip, stance, all that kind of stuff. And I tell you what, it's definitely surprised me. Last time we went out to the range, uh, my accuracy went way up compared to what it was before training with this. So if you're uh, wanting to get something that will allow you to train um, you know, at home without having to spend a lot of money in ammo, this is a very good choice. They're not very cheap. They're a little bit expensive. I think I paid about 75 bucks for this. But it's definitely, definitely improved my accuracy big time without having to spend a, a whole bunch of ammo. So I'm going to show you uh, where I uh, train a little bit, and I'm going to show you um, how I practice with either or, or each one of these two. Um, as far as accuracy goes, they're both really, really accurate weapons. I'm going to fire uh, five of these uh, laser rounds into the target. Uh, first with Glock 19, just to kind of get you an idea. And I'm standing far back at five yards. That's usually my uh, uh, range. And sometimes I go at seven yards in the living room and I just set a target there so I can practice a little bit better. But um, yeah, we'll do that. Oh, before we do that, also the sights. Obviously, the sights are a little bit different. On this one, you've got your three-dot system, which I, I like. I don't mind it at all. It's very, very nice. And also, uh, with Glock 19, you've got your typical, whatever you call it, Glock 19 sights. Now, if you can tell what I've done right there in the middle of the rear sight, I painted with a, a Sharpie. Uh, it, right in the center, I painted a uh, black mark, and that's just so that 
I'm uh, a little bit faster uh, acquiring the target and placing that front side right in the middle where it needs to be. It just kind of helps a little bit, and that's a trick that I picked up from another channel on YouTube. Uh, but anyway, yeah, some of the differences. Obviously, these are plastic, and the M&P are metal, so there's something there to consider. Of course, you can do one-hand uh, reloads with your belt with both, uh, maybe not so much with the Glock because you know it's not quite straight. I mean you can do it without a problem. Put in your belt and there it goes. Of course now this light kind of caught my uh, pants there but that's user error is not the pistol at all. And of course you can do the same with your uh, Smith & Wesson. There you go. So if you had to do uh, single-handed reloads or single-handed um, you know, pull the slide, you can definitely do so with both sides. Stock, by the way. Now, the, these both are stock. There has been no modifications. The only modification that I have on the Glock 19 is um, this wrap. This is a gun skins wrap, and that's just basically a wrap. It's not paint. Uh, it's a very, very highly durable, uh, strong wrap, and it goes there, and uh, it stays there. So I haven't had any issues with that. That's the only modification. Um, so yeah, let's go and uh, do five rounds on each with a laser target and uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, so back here we have the target and I'm going to be standing back there at five yards and it's exactly five yards. I already have the laser light um, trainer into the chamber and um, we're going to do five rounds with the Glock 19 and I'm going to aim, of course, center of mass. So you can kind of see how uh, the accuracy works as far as my own use and you can see how the laser light works as well. So there was five rounds with the Glock 19 and I gotta say it wasn't my best uh, uh, practice but you know it's just for purposes of demonstration so Let's go get the M&P and we'll do the same drill. And just in case you guys are curious how this goes on, basically you just lock the slide back. You put this into the chamber, press it forward, and there you go. That's all there is to it. So five shots with this one. So there you go. I don't know if you can tell the difference, but definitely I've always noticed I'm a little bit more accurate with the M&P9. Uh, that's got nothing to do with the uh, pistols. It's probably just the way it, it, it works for me. It's, it feels a little bit more uh, natural in the hand, and the point of aim feels a little bit more, uh, I guess, more natural, so to speak. Now, to remove the laser light, lock it back again, and you grab something like a pencil and basically push from the far end of the barrel and it comes out the uh, bottom. So there you go guys, just a little quick demonstration on how I practice at home without having to spend a whole lot of ammo uh, with the laser light. It definitely has improved, like I said, a lot uh, as far as my accuracy, as far as my, um, uh, you can practice reloading drills with that or malfunction drills with that and it, and it works just flawlessly. Uh, I don't know if you could tell, again, my accuracy a little bit better with the Smith & Wesson than the Glock 19, but that's just me. It's nothing to do with the with the pistols. Now, as far as mag capacity, again, this is a standard uh, M&P 9 um, magazine, and this is a 17-round mag, and here's your standard Glock 19 um, 15-round magazine. These are both the full capacity if you live in a state that allows you to carry a full capacity mag. I live in Texas and I do have a concealed carry license so I do carry both of these uh, weapons. Of course this is my primary carry weapon and I carry it pretty much every single day. Sometimes I have to leave it in the car because I work in a hospital and this one has to stay in the car. I cannot carry it inside of the hospital. Um, as far as the uh, Smith & Wesson, its primary function right now it's um, a night sight pistol, but um, I do carry this from time to time. And the way I do that is with one of these Galco um, 
uh, inside the waistband uh, holster and this goes on very very um, easy it's a very very good fit to the pistol that's how it goes uh, the way I carry the Glock 19 is with uh, one of these uh, alien gear holsters and this is the uh, 3.0 um, or cloak tug 3.0 I've done a video on this uh, a while back and of course you know very very comfortable holster very very secure uh, these both are very secure holsters there uh, so yeah that's that's the way I carry it well guys uh, the reason I'm doing this video or the reason I did this video is just to kind of get you an idea if you're looking at these uh, either of these two pistols or if you have one like I did before I couldn't find any videos that would compare uh, sort of a, uh, a very basic comparison between the two of them when I had the Glock 19 and I was wanting to get the um, M&P 9 there wasn't a, a very good comparison video most of the time they compare it with the M&P 9C which is the compact which is I guess more comparable in terms of uh, size to the Glock 19 um, so you know I went ahead with this one just for the higher uh, mag capacity but in the uh, future I may uh, end up buying the M&P 9C just because my accuracy seems to be a little bit better with this one than with the Glock 19 so there you go take it for what it's worth I'm not uh, a gun expert I'm not an expert shooter I don't do competition I just do uh, I just shoot for fun I like to go to the range and just you know shoot for fun again um, I do carry I do have a concealed carry license again so definitely for defensive purposes uh, both of the weapons are very very reliable before we conclude the video I want to thank uh, Mr. Donnie Pavolini uh, from Donnie Pavolini Outdoors for sending me this awesome t-shirt I'm going to show you the back too there it is this is uh, the t-shirt that they had for the first annual Southern Bushcraft rendezvous in Mississippi that I couldn't attend I had planned to but um, you know life happened and I couldn't attend so uh, definitely we'll try to make it next year but uh, Donnie I really appreciate you for sending me the t-shirt and if you guys want to go check out his channel I'll post a link of his channel he's got a really cool channel does a lot of stuff uh, out in the woods so definitely go check it out alright guys like always don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe please check us out on Facebook Muddy Tiger Outdoors and we'll see you guys in the next video take care